Hi, my name is Jerry Yu, and thank you for watching my YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about something that's dear to my heart, college planning. See, my son is currently in eighth grade, and I have been in college planning for 20 years, so this journey with my son is very special. And I wanted to share with you the insight and importance of college planning. So what is college planning? Too often, people get mixed up between college planning and college funding. The most important thing for college planning is getting the kids into the school. It's how you are going to get them accepted. That's why a lot of the college planners, uh, what we do is we will have them apply to three to five schools, and we have a couple of the dream schools, and then we have a couple of the school that they are almost guaranteed to get in. But again, most importantly, it's getting them into the school. But how do we do that? It's working with the counselor, working with the um, administration team, and working with the uh, college planners. See all that fun stuff behind the scene, and that's what's going on right now uh, when kids are getting ready to submit for their college application. Right? And the second part is, how do you make it affordable? Okay. Sometimes it's moving assets around. Sometimes it's taking out loans, and sometimes it's a college funding plan. But sometimes it's utilizing the 529, but that's, that's the part where we transition over to college funding. So again, college planning is broken down into two parts. One is how to get into school, super important. Uh, frankly, the most important thing. Second is how to make it affordable. See, that's the college funding part. The first part, getting into school, this, this is typically done in eighth grade to, the, to uh, junior years. And the reason why is because if your kids are in fifth grade or in elementary school, you can't really be working with these, uh, the college counselors. So kids are too young. Even eighth grade is right on the cusp. So when your kids transition to high school, at least you've got a good roadmap to know what to expect and what you are going to do. And again, it's too young when they're in the third grade or in elementary school to think about that, but because they're not ready yet. But you need to have a game plan laid out when the kids are in eighth grade to junior years. Okay. Now you might think, why not seniors? Well, in senior years, you are kind of out of luck. There is not a whole lot of college planners can, uh, counselor can do uh, to help them prepare. They should be already be accepted or their, uh, by their senior year or getting their acceptance letters. See, at that point, it's just kind of helping them with the appeal letters and such, but it's not real college planning at that point. And honestly, a lot of the students at that point are going to be looking at community college. So again, eighth grade to junior year is where we really want to focus on the college planning. Now, I did talk about college funding, and that's typically when children are younger than eighth grade. Now, a lot of the time people say, well, what do I do with my newborn? Or what do I do, uh, you know, my son or daughter um, just had a newborn baby. Can we start with college planning or college funding? The answer is yes. Again, it's too young to start with college counselors, but it's never too young to start college funding process. Because again, instead of waiting until they're in uh, eighth grade or the freshman year in high school, you, uh, you will be forced to be aggressively on those plans on college funding plan because you need to income uh, for college in five to six years. But if you start saving college funds when the children are really young or even before they were born, now you have an extra 15 or maybe 20 years to prepare sometime. So with that being said, you don't have to put in $2,000, $5,000 a month to get those ready return to borrow against it for college. See, we can be less aggressive, $500 a month, thousand dollars a month or even a couple of hundred dollars per month is still better because we have time to utilize the power of compounding interest. See another common question I get is, well Jerry what about, what about the 529 or the Gerber plan? Will that, will that be beneficial at all? Well let's talk about this. I don't know. Every family situation is different. There are families out there that make a bakut of money where honestly a 529 plan might be beneficial along with the college funding plan that we would design. Now with the Gerber plan, honestly, that is a marketing genius. See, all that is, 
is a participating whole life life insurance policy that has very low yielding rate of return, but again, it shelters the money for college. It is great marketing, so people think um, it's the best thing out there in the world. But nonetheless, I have client tells me, hey, we have been uh, participating in the Gerber plan for, for our kids. But that's great, because that's still better than doing nothing. So again, 529 or Gerber plans, they're, uh, they're, those are the things that are out there that most people recognize. And I don't know, it would be good for them, we will have to review it. And that's the benefit of working with a real college planner and financial advisor is we can assess the situation and we can look at the pros and cons and to see what type of plan that they have. Right, okay, maybe you are in this and that the best thing is it's the best thing out there or more importantly, what you are is hurting you, right? Then we can help you to transition to help you to do something better. Um, now, let's talk a little bit about current events. See, there are a lot of uh, talk about this. EFC is changing and the changing might impact your chance of receiving aid or grants. See, EFC stands for Expected Family Contribution. See, I know a lot of people in the college planning world are very scared with the EFC changing. But what does that mean? Okay, what is going to look like? See, the big fear is when they change it over to the student, if they change to a student aid index, SAI, what they are ch changing is the opportunity and the discount when parents and families have two kids in school. Now, that's not going to hurt the Rockefellers or the Gates family because they can pay outright. But if you get a husband and a wife with two kids going to school, let's say that they're making a combined income of $200,000 a year, and you don't get that discount on the second child, that could be the difference of that second child going to a top tier school or frankly going to a community college because of that discount. But again, this is all the importance of why you wanted to work with a college planner to make sure we can move asset around and make sure uh, the kids are getting the best opportunity to attend all the school that any student might want to attend. Right, lastly, there has been a lot of talk in conference about passing the free education. See a lot of uh, Congress people out there saying that they just wanted to give free education and loan forgiveness. That, oh, that all sounds good, but think about this. We talk, uh, we talk about this a lot in the college planning world. It's already tough to get into school currently. Right? Students with the 4.2 GPAs can even get into the top UC or um, state school for that matter. But now you don't have to worry about the affordability because it's free. So students nowadays might take four, even six years to get a bachelor's degree would take anywhere from eight to 10 years. That's a long time. See, that's a difference of somebody graduating in their 20s versus in their 30s. See, a lot of time uh, we talk about college uh, savings, um, 10 extra years of attending school and not working in the workforce, that's a big detriment to everyone's pocketbook, especially the family that are financially supporting the kids. Now, the good news is that it doesn't affect private schools. See, the benefit of attending a top tier private schools are classes are smaller, more engagement with the professors, and graduate four to five years versus four to six years in the uh, UC and the state school. But, you, but then you might say that private school are very expensive. That's why you need to work with a college planner like us. The college planner, planner can help you obtain grants or free money to attend college and offset your out-of-pocket cost. See, we have many students graduating from a private university in four years and the total costs are not much higher than public university. So will the Congress pass the free education? Most likely not. It's just always come up during the political season, just like right now. But it's good to know some of the rhetoric that's been, throwing, that's been thrown out there. So the worst case scenario, if this does happen, it's important for family to work with a college planner to get kids accepted into one of those top tier private schools with grants and free money so they can graduate under four years and hit the market field. Again, my name is Jerry Yu. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.